Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Rowan. I come from CSR, Australia. And uh, today, I'm glad to be here our current work about the uh, integrity verification for the online model deployed on the cloud. So we call it the public check. Uh, oops. Yeah. So 2023 is the year of AI. And we can see two new trends. The, the first one is the last model. The remarkable performance of AI is driven by the large scale parameters somehow. For example, the, the GPT-3, it has 100 uh, billion parameters. For GPT-4, it may be more than one trillion uh, parameters. So the cost to train the AI models, especially for the large model, is very expensive. In, uh, for example, the software, hardware, something. So it's important to protect the intellectual property or the int integrity of the model during the entire deployment life cycle. Oops. The second trend is the commercialization. So many and many pre-trained AI models are, are available as a service on the cloud. So we call it the AI as a service or machine learning as a service. So it's very costly effective to uh, reduce the need for like the expensive hardware or software. But it, it, it also introduced more challenges for the integrity verification for the model on the cloud. So for, uh, for the first point is the verification target. Here, the target is not the static files stored in the cloud. Actually, it's the, the target is the running model deployed on the cloud. It's a kind of abstract API services. The second point is the commercialization introduced multi rules, multi stages during the de deployment. For example, the model developer will transfer or delegate the developed model to the model agent. The model agent can be the, like an uh, Apple app store. They will perform the prof uh, professional and flexible commercialization. And then next, the model agent will uh, deploy the model on the cloud after the integrity checking or fingerprinting. And finally, a wide range of users will use the model uh, through the APIs, almost uh, always after uh, the paywall. So the, oops, sorry. But uh, existing uh, integrity verification can only provide the private verification. So it's one way verification between the model developer and the cloud. And the uh, model developer is the only customer for the verification and uh, they have the full control uh, of the model. But the multi-users and multi-stages in the commercialization environment requires the public verification. It has four differences compared to the private verification. The first, pro the first point is the verification methods. The only way uh, access to the deployed model is from the black box API queries. And the second point is the fingerprinting extraction. So here, the white box information about, about the model may be not available. For example, the model agent only has the user's use right instead of, instead of the white box information or full control of the model, especially when the model got uh, protected or encrypted. And the gradient information of, of the model is harder to obtain for the deployed model on the cloud. So the third point is the verification key or verification samples may be released to malicious users. The fourth point is the cloud, namely the verification provider. They can be uh, di dishonest because they have the capability to manipulate the verification result and uh, they have the motivation to modify the model. For example, they can press the model to save the cost uh, for deployment and storage without the permission from users. Um, so there's a new, uh, re a new requirement for the design of the integrity verification. The first type of the criteria is the fidelity, including the task fidelity and the verification fidelity. So for example, the verification mechanism cannot change the information of the model or it cannot have the negative impact on the normal business of the model. And also the fingerprinting should be associated with the uh, essential property of the model, like the predictive behavior patterns. The second uh, type of, of the criteria is the uh, efficacy. So first, uh, the verification should be uh, with a very high precision to detect the integrity issues, but with a low uh, query overhead because we, we use the API. The API is not free, right? The second point is the 
the time and the computing resources to design the verification sample should be at a low level overhead. The third one is uh, the design method should be um, or would be better to apply to many uh, types of model and many sizes of model, including the protect model, the large scale model, and the different types of the model. The third type is the robustness. We need to defeat the verification sample leakage by like, increasing the difficulty of uh, recovering fingerprinting from the released sample. And uh, we also need to defeat <coughs> the dishonest cloud by increasing the indistinguishability between the verification sample and the normal business sample. Because uh, if the cloud cannot uh, distinguish the verification query from the normal business query, they have to give the honest answer from the genuine model instead of the modified model. So to meet this criteria, we, we propose the public check. And then the motivation of the design is uh, any manipulation of the model will be reflected, re reflected as the shift in the distant boundary, affecting the predictions of the sample around the distant boundary. And uh, at the same time, the, the prediction of the sample around the distant boundary are more sensitive to the perturbation. So therefore, we can generate some sample densely around the distant boundary as the verification key and use their unstable prediction as the verification value so to capture the fingerprinting of the model. And the next question is how to further improve the generation efficiency, how to cover as wide a part of the descent boundary as possible, and how to defeat the dishonest cloud, how to defeat the verification sample leakage. So in summary, so first we, <coughs> we designed the perturbation in the Latin space to improve the, uh, instead of the high dimensional pixel space to, to enhance the generation efficiency. And also we introduced the smoothness, randomness, and uncertainty into the generation progress to defeat the dishonest or malicious parties. So for example, given the input X, uh, such as the handwriting disease, we use an encoder to transform X to a low dimensional latent repetition, uh, like a 10 dimensional latent vector. And here we introduce a disentanglement strategy into the encoder to make every uh, latent dimension control one semantic attribute only. So for example, the first latent dimension control the rotation angle of the disease. The second one control the width of the digits and so on. And the next we add perturbations into the latent vector of X until the reconstructed output has different uh, prediction on the target on the target verified uh, uh, classifier or model. And the next, we, we try to find the bounded range for the uh, unstable prediction or for, for each di uh, latent dimension and the sample latent vector from the unstable prediction value range for the reconstruction and use the re re reconstructed copies of the reference X to be the verification samples. And finally, we also use a filter to enhance the uh, smoothness of the verification sample because the smoothness is very important for the, to defeat the dishonest cloud. We also uh, evaluate our performance using four different data sets for different types of the model and uh, for different integrity uh, attacks, including the posing, backdoor, even the model compression. So for the fidelity, our design doesn't change anything about the model. So there's no negative impact on the uh, normal business performance. And also our fingerprinting is associated with the uh, uh, predictive behavior patterns. So uh, we meet the fidelity requirement. So for the efficacy, so first our design doesn't need any white box information about model. We just use the prediction output of the model to capture the fingerprinting. So it can be applied for any types of the model, uh, any size of the model. And also we have a very high accuracy uh, to detect the integrity concerns with very low uh, query overhead. For example, we just need five to 10 API queries to detect 100% of the model with the integrity concerns. And uh, also we, <coughs> we demonstrate the uh, low overhead uh, for the generation of the verification samples because the generation is using the pre-trained autoencoder without involving any training back propagation during the generation. 
So, and also we designed the product using the low dimensional uh, Latin, Latin space, so we can reduce the, uh, the time of the generation. So for example, uh, compared to the pixel-wise, the provision based verification, we reduce the time to generate 100 sample from th uh, 300 seconds to within 100, uh, one second. We also tested the smoothness of the uh, verification samples in terms of some perceptual similarity. And uh, compared to the backdoor based or the uh, pixel-wise perturbation, our uh, verification samples uh, is much harder to be detected or identified from the ordinary samples because we use the uh, structure perturbation. And we also report the robustness of our design. We, we consider five adaptive attacks so when considering the uh, malicious user can collect many verification samples and labels uh, to, like, to identify verification from the normal, uh, normal uh, business sample, or they wanted to bypass the verification, or they wanted to recover the fingerprinting from the released sample. And uh, the result is we can defeat all the adaptive attackers and uh, but existing uh, method cannot. The reason is we introduce the randomness, uncertainty, and smoothness into the design. And uh, more details are included in the paper. And uh, thanks for your time. I'm looking for the questions. Thank you. So I think we are over time. So yeah. So we we'll, we'll just move to the next one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much. And let's put it offline uh, for the questions. So, yeah, thank you, Shaw, again.